So maybe you've heard or maybe you haven't that there is some ongoing drama in the crypto space. Not even necessarily drama, just mind-blowing behavior. From Logan Paul to SBF and FTX, all of this has reminded me of a topic I wanted to make a video on, and that is these NFTs. Well, not these exactly. These are photos I printed on a Kodak printer at CVS, but these are NFTs you've likely seen around. I was going to make a joke about NFTs, but I think they take care of that themselves. There's a big misconception that when you buy an NFT, you're literally buying the artwork and the blockchain confirms it. I heard someone say before that when you buy an NFT, you're just buying a URL, but I never actually looked into it any further. So today we're going to look into that and figure out exactly what you get when you purchase an NFT. I would say NFTs are the low point of crypto, but then something else happens and we reach a new low. So this is OpenSea. It's an NFT marketplace, likely the most popular one out there. For our example, let's search for a popular project such as Board Ape Yacht Club. So here are the current NFTs that are up for sale. So let's pick one of these as an example. They just get worse and worse the more you scroll. So let's go with this one. So on this page, if we scroll down and go to the details section, from here we can see the contract that is actually tied to this NFT. And go ahead and open this in a new tab. This takes us to Etherscan. On this page, we want to go to the contract. This is the actual code that the contract is comprised of. We want to go to read contract. And on this page, we want to look for a function called token URI. We can see here number 20, token URI. And inside of here, we want to take the token ID from OpenSea, 3559. Put that in that box, select query, and we are now presented with a string that contains an IPFS address. IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System. If you've ever heard of BitTorrent and how that works, IPFS is very similar. You have a network comprised of nodes, which are just individuals or servers or companies running this IPFS software. Those nodes can talk to one another. And how it works is, let's say you're a node on the network and you request an IPFS URL. You'll ask a peer that's nearby, hey, do you know who has this content? That peer will say, yes, I know who does. Here's the node with the content. It can then send it back. It's a decentralized way to store files and to share information. And that's what we see here. This is the IPFS URL. So you can't just go there in your browser. It doesn't work. So instead, we're going to use an IPFS gateway. There are public ones available. A popular one is ipfs.io slash ipfs. And then we just follow that with the string that we found on etherscan.io. Now when we load this, the reply we get is JSON. And what we can see here is we have an image. Here's the URL that's tied to it. And then here's some metadata about the image. So this is the data that's tied to the NFT that is purchased when it's bought. And this is the image that you actually get. Again, it's another IPFS URL. And now if we go to this, and then here's the image. You have a URL that's hosted on IPFS. The image is not actually on the blockchain. The image is not there for people to see. It's just this JSON data that has the image URL that you can access on the interplanetary file system. Someone has that image hosted there, whether or not that'll be there forever, or sometimes that image just disappears after the sale. You're not purchasing any rights or anything like that. You're just purchasing this JSON data that has some metadata attached to it, some attributes, and a pointer to a URL. You know, as we saw here, this is going for over $100,000. All that you get is some record on the blockchain that says you purchased this. And to the defenders of NFTs, yes, I know there's different ways you can host these files that are more resilient and reliable, but that takes us back to the initial question of what do you get when you buy an NFT? And to me, this is much different from what I initially thought NFTs were and how they were marketed and promoted. So not that this is glamorous by any means, but I think the story we were told about NFTs, this is a lot more glamorous than what you're actually getting. So the moral of the story is don't pay six figures for some NFT that an influencer promoted so that they can make a quick buck off their fan base.